No. Ah, it's working. Okay, good. Um, less of a hiccup this time around, hopefully. Now, uh, got you guys situated above my sewing desk. For those of you who are just tuning in, I'm working on my uh, truly Victorian uh, pattern number 141, the 1860 round cage crinoline. I just finished in my last stream before lunch break there, uh, taking in all of my hoops. Now I am going to um, do some reinforcement type sewing here because I don't want these to fall apart. Some of the stitching um, of old is coming apart. I'm going to have to do some jimmying around here. White thread in here. I think so. I have to go dig. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> No, not exactly the most efficient way of finding thread, but it's pretty. And pretty is very rarely, if at all, practical. Oh, here we go. Some white there. And then the bobbins there. Let's see what we got to do. We throw our machine. What's it doing? There we go. It was stuck. Blah, here we go. It's getting ready. Want some people to show up. Hello, welcome. I should put my last. I did bring them. I did remember to bring them. And wipe off. What's going on here? There seems to be a bit of a lag between my encoding software and YouTube, like a two to three second lag. So um, if you notice that I don't respond to comments or questions in the chat right away, that's why. Can everybody hear and see me okay? I know it's not the best. In the world, but all right. Um, my glasses. My glasses are there. Okay. Let us move the mouse out of the way. Let's see what we can do here. I saw the machine pretty close to the table's edge here just to get this part in. And there we go. I'm going to be stitching the casing. All of my lines from when I first sewed this are luckily still there. I just got to be very careful that I don't um, hit the boning with my sewing machine because that would be bad. Let us back this up a little bit here. You can see where my little stitch lines were. There we go. Woo. 
working. Working so far. I'm gonna keep that out of the way. Keep everything relatively nice and straight. about a couple of wrinkles getting sewn into this because nobody's going to see it. Well, at least that's what I think is to justify, justify um, shot or commission. Let's have a look at this side. Actually, that's not too bad. The only person to know is me. one. Go 
next supposed to be there, but you know, it's all good. top of the pocket closed and then sew it closed. So this is the hole here that I was adjusting all of my hoops through. Like this. A lot of you are probably wondering well, why don't you just take all the hoops out of there and Take in the hoop bag as much as you need it to go. Well, because that would be logical. <laughs> that would require taking the entire thing apart, remeasuring everything all over again, and I don't feel like doing that. So, one of these days, I will probably just completely remake this thing. Right now, I do not have. The ability to do that. I'm gonna bring this over here for a sec. Okay, let's uh, let's see what we do. Let us see, let us see. zipper foot for this. close enough to the stitch line to stitch back over it. Maybe, possibly, yes. I'm gonna go with maybe. Hopefully this works. Just try not to stick myself with beans. Stop.
So that little issue is for the most part taken care of. Oops. Okay, now what I need to do is create the muffle that goes around the bottom leg portion. Go back to all the various measurements that I was typing into my phone before. Hopefully they are still in there. Even if they're not, I still have the paper. Seven, according to this chart. Hook number seven. Well, I took hook number seven into thirty-four point seven five. So we're looking at a measurement of about 110 all the way around. But I want it to ruffle, so when I cut a piece of fabric that double that then, I might make a pleated ruffle instead of like a full ruffle. Is my book on peace. It's time to look some stuff up. Please. This is an amazing book, by the way. The Sewing Book by Allison Smith. I believe you can get it on Amazon for like $25. It has got a ton of awesome information in here. Uh, Pleats and Catters, page 104. Mm -hmm. There we go. Pleats. Yeah, so if I want to do a pleated bottom, I would have to cut a piece of fabric that was at least three times the size that I was going for. There's gonna be some pressing involved here, people. I have to set up an ironing board. So, yeah, so I think I'm gonna do like one inch, a one inch pleated ruffle, or should I do just a regular old gathered ruffle? Let's see what that looks like first. Where's the, in I need an index to find the index. Um, gathers shouldn't be far from plates, apparently. Just gotta keep flipping pages. Gathers, okay? Mm -hmm. This will teach you how to draft a gathered portion. Which is a wee bit annoying. I was kind of hoping that it would say, oh, if you're working with this kind of fabric and to make this gather, you need to do this, that, and the other thing to it. It doesn't. So I'm guessing at this point. Hmm. I'm going 
go with the idea of doing a gather and I'm going to cut my fabric twice as long as I need the uh, as the actual hoop portion is. We'll see how that goes. There's a whole lot of book reading and stuff here. Alright, so, for the fabric. Oof, as I fall off my seat. Sorry. Okay, piece of fabric. I'm going to. So this is just a piece of cast off fabric that I've had in storage forever and ever and ever. Um, Oh jeez. Will it be enough? Um, um, where's my tape measure? <laughs> so scattered, right? Ah, there it is. piece of fabric might actually be long enough for what I need it for. Hello! Thanks for tuning in. I am just starting to uh, work on a ruffle to put on the bottom of my hoop skirt, or hoop crinoline. I'm just trying to measure how long this fabric is because I need it to be at least 200 inches long. At least. Right. It's going to be interesting to measure because My tape measure, I think, only goes to 120 inches. So this will be interesting. Does this work? But that's fine because I can cut it into strips and stitch them together if need be. Why does my finger hurt? Oh, looks like I stabbed myself with a needle at some point. I just love it when you wonder why, where your injuries come from. Can't stay on here very long. I'm going to be logging off in about 40 minutes here because I gotta let my kid. Okay, so I've got. A hundred and well, more than a hundred and twenty here. Hundred and twenty there. This point. Well, now I have to pick it up off the floor. Anyway, um, so yes, I need to trim this down. Into... At least, how many, how many was that? Real <laughs> thing. I can just keep these out so I don't have to keep pulling them out of the envelope. times two. So if I cut this at 130 and then cut 
give it a half inch, not 130, 121, good grief, 130 is way too much. Let's get this doing what I need it to be doing here. this and then if I cut it past the length I need there's a measurement I should probably take how long how wide does it need to be one sec Needs to be ten inches wide. Oopsie poopsie. Okay, so I'm going to cut it at 10 and a half because I've got selvage on the end there and I don't want that as part of my ruffle. So start marking. Other end, I need a shorter tape measure. Probably will. I would probably get a really wonky, <laughs> wonky donkey um, ruffle happening here. Hello, how are you, Mr. Daniel? Mr. Daniel Peanut. Okay. I need to read things before. I need to read them in my head before I read them out loud. Can everybody hear me okay? I really can't, like, I've turned the sound off on the YouTube video so I don't get feedback, but just let me know if things are going wrong somehow. And hopefully I'll be able to fix it. Probably not, but I will give it my best attempt. A tech-savvy individual I am not. Ow! Or at least not when it comes to this sort of thing. I can hear Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just, uh, if you just tuned in, pardon my pin in my face, I'm, uh, putting a ruffle on my hoop skirt. Because it, and if you watched, well, there's some interesting stuff going on there. Um, if you watched my last live stream that I did a couple hours ago, I took all of my um, hoops in so that um, I took the diameter in, not the circumference in, by two inches because I want to be able to put a thicker um, ruffled petticoat on over top of this because the petticoat I have that I made um, is very... Uh, 
poor at hiding the fact that there is a hoop skirt or a hoop crinoline underneath my Princess Peach skirt. So, that is what I am attempting to resolve now. This is not going to work out very well, but it doesn't need to be fancy. It just needs to get the job done. I need my scissors. I came here today looking for good quality sewing work. I'm sorry, it's not happening today. I am totally winging it as I wave a giant thing of scissors in your faces. I'm just going to stop now and I'm going to cut this. Ooh, maybe I can't cut through all of that. Okay. cut through all of that. Wow. These are some hefty scissors. Whoops. I'm going to get a hand workout today. mentioned in my last stream um, that I'm hoping to do a lot more live streams, um, hoping to be able to uh, show you guys um, my work in progress um, projects and uh, personal projects. Like, I have a couple projects over there, like one of them is uh, this sweater dress that I want to make for myself and there's a bunch of other personal projects there that I want to do that are not um, costume related. I'm going to keep my edited videos to costumes and geeky themed stuff and then my live streams will be all of my like work in progress and personal um, projects because if I did everything as an edited video for YouTube, um, I would be editing forever. And to be quite frank, I hate editing. I hate it so much. Ugh. Nothing in the world will make you hate your videos more than having to edit them yourself. It's just like, I don't want to watch this like, for the 20th time in a row. Some days it feels like I'd rather watch Paw Patrol in a loop. Oh wait, I do. I'm a mom. <laughs> Paw Patrol. Okay. Moving on. Editing is long. It takes too much commitment. <laughs> well, you know, I would get somebody who knows what they're doing to do it for me, but um, that would involve things like contracts and um, money, things that I just can't do right now. One day, one day I hope to be able to hire somebody to do my video editing for me, but for now, it's all me. All me. I guess I'll know why my wrist is sore tomorrow. This is going to look so bad. Golly.
get this out of my way. This is probably a very poor choice of fabric to use for this. I have no clue what else I would ever use this for. So, let's have a look here. I should have two pieces. Yep, I do. <laughs> I am a genius, kind of. Um, I need... I need my surgery. Here's this big beast. I need to put white thread on the surgery. Oh, crap. An easy way to thread your serger. Watch this. Take the old thread, tie it to the new thread. And you can really only do this with the bottom two um, portions. Can't do this with the needle one, the knot won't fit through the needles. You can do this with the whoopsie. Okay, I guess I'm threading that the proper way. Thanks, Murphy's Law. Oh. About to lose. Lose a bunch of people's attention. Nobody wants to see me thread a freaking surgery. People are going to start leaving. That goes in there, that goes in our layer. Okay. Gotta make this quick. I'm gonna have to probably save this for another stream later on down the road. Does this go now? It goes up in here. And then it goes in Get in there. There. Like that. Okay, so there's my two new white threads. And then, why I said nothing is ever where I want it to be. This is annoying. Alright, now for the needles. That goes in there. Sorry guys, I am completely not prepared right now, but then again, I really didn't know entirely what I was going to be doing today, so this is kind of playing it by ear. Where's my tweezers in there? Good quality content brought to you by Versa Minor Sewing. Come watch me thread my serger, because that's entertaining. Found a trick to thread an overlocker. You get threaded and snip off the spool, then tie the new thread on and pull through. Well, that's what I just did. That's what I did, Mr. Dan. That's what I just did. And it is an awesome, awesome trick. Because who wants to actually thread a serger? from the ground up. Not me. Like that. And then, just want to give this a quick test. Where's my, there it is. Always test to make sure that everything is threaded nicely before you actually start on your real deal. Son up. Ok, 
Okay, looks like this is all going very well. I think I'll do a regular surge for my top edge and then for my bottom edge. Actually, no, I'll just regular surge the whole thing. I don't need to be fancy and do a rolled seam. Everything seems to be working just fine. Get that out of the picture. Get that out of the way. Where is my book? There it is. Don't cuss. We're supposed to be family friendly. Mr. Dan, are you from Great Britain by any chance? I don't hear. I mean, it's not uncommon to hear North Americans call it an overlocker too. I've just always heard it as a serger. Whenever I've heard overlocker, it's usually some little old British grandma. I am, yes, but currently living in, in Ireland. Wow, nice. Well, probably not. It's probably freezing cold there right now, right? You guys are along the same lat No, it's not latitude. Longitude lines is us? It's freezing cold here and wet. As I've told some of my students in the past, a serger is like a helicopter. With, instead of being a thousand moving parts trying to kill you, it's a thousand moving parts trying to destroy your project. So this could go awry at any moment. It's cold and wet. Currently dealing with a cold. Oh, ew. Get well soon. Dealing with a cold while it is cold is always so much harder. Drink lots of lemon tea. Helps me. stream of really boring stitching. Opens up the sinuses. I love taking peppermint tea and steeping it so that it's a little darker than I usually like it, and then mixing in hot chocolate powder. It is really good. Um, I discovered if you do that and then add a little splash of the uh, Nescafe um, almond vanilla coffee whitener, 
That tastes really good. It's almost like your own homemade, like, mocha coffee that you would get from Starbucks. I'm getting bored. You guys got to be bored, right? Mm -hmm. Almost. I did not, I was sewing. I can do it. I'm not going to be doing this for much longer and then I'll go get them. Alright. Yeah, bye. That's the hubby. Confirming pickup plans for the child. Okay. <laughs> Now, unfortunately, thinking long strips are never fun to serge, but they give lovely ones. They do, and one of the reasons that I'm putting the ruffle on the bottom of the skirt is, or the crinoline, is to kind of push the skirt away from uh, from the hoops, but. Uh, I'm also going to be making a ruffled petticoat, so honestly, I really don't know why I'm doing this. Mostly just to kill time, I think. <sighs> like, honestly. Maybe I should just save these ruffles for the petticoat. Just make the petticoat. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Ten minutes. So you know what? Actually, I'm gonna see how everything looks on my mannequin so far. Um, this is just one sec, and I'm going to flip you guys around so you see the mannequin over there. actually going to have to put a proper waistband on this thing. Uh, 
this is where things just start going awry. <laughs> I'm still here, I just disappeared for a second. Ah, come on. Oh, yeah. Huh, me too. Take this. the hoops will help keep the dress off the floor so it won't get dirty. Yeah, that is true. Um, and hopefully keep me from stepping on it. If everybody thinks that wearing a hoop crinoline um, mm -hmm. negates the possibility of stepping on your hem, but I've nearly fallen flat on my face because my foot has gone straight through the hoops. Because as you walk, the hoops swing down toward the floor. They do not swing out. So, gotten into the habit of holding on to at least one of the hoops through my dress so that I don't step on it. Actually, the first time I competed with Princess Peach, I only fell flat on my face on the stage. <laughs> Here is the original petticoat. Well, that goes on so much easier. else I want to do to my dress is put some pockets underneath my peplums so that uh, I can hide things in my dress. Like that. that one looks so much smoother than it normally does. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. Let me get a bit of an angle on this here. And then make this costume, which I hope to one day, I will make it so that it's a bodice and skirt outfit to the last day, full dress, because the full dress is so difficult to get on. Let's see here. Actually, might not need another petticoat underneath it. That actually, huh? I might just need the ruffle and the crinoline just for a little extra volume around the bottom. But that actually looks really good because before the crinoline was so big. 
or I incised the skirt too tight to the crinoline, and you can actually see the hoops through the dress, even with the petticoat on. But this actually looks not too shabby. And I like it. Well, hot diggity dog. <laughs> that looks so much better. Uh, seems like only last year. Oh, geez, me too. Seems like a long time ago. Back then, I was I only had one kid to look after. <laughs> so, still living in that teeny tiny little apartment though that I originally made. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this looks this looks a lot better. Now I think yeah I'm gonna hide like a pocket or something up here so that I can have things like my my cards and my phone hiding in my dress. That looks so much better. Oh, and this comes together nicely in the middle. Yes. So proud. Mm -hmm. You could do to hide the hoops is use thin netting and make it into a petticoat between the hoops and the actual petticoat. Oh, you mean like do like a ruffle for each hoop? Because I could do that too. It'd probably take me less time than making a full. Ooh, that was my neck. Than making a full fledged uh, petticoat. But ideas, different ideas. Excuse me, pardon me. Showing off my tonsils. Very good. Okay. Well. I have to go and get my kid from school and take him home. I think I'm going to wrap this up for today. I don't know when I'm going to do my next one. Um, my hope is to be able to do one maybe once every two weeks or so. If it proves to be something uh, that people are enjoying and getting um, bigger audience as things go along, I might increase the uh, the frequency, but for now, it's probably just going to be once every two weeks if I can do it. And uh, I'm going to be uploading again really soon. I'm working, or this I have worked on. The videos that will be uploaded are on a children's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle costume, and then after that, I will be working on a Rosie the Riveter costume. So stay tuned for those, they are coming. It's <laughs> just Finding the time. Uh, I probably have lots of time. I just need to sacrifice the amount that I spend playing with the video games. <laughs> yes. So, anyway, thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in for my really first set of live streams. I hope you learned something, or at the very least, got a giggle out of how silly I was being. And uh, I will see you guys on the next one. So, until next time, happy sewing, everybody. Yes, thank you for being here, Mr. Dan. Thank you for being here. See y'all later. Bye-bye.